I'd like to begin tonight's Zoom meeting uh, with just a review of a few procedures. Um, if you could please uh, make sure to mute your microphone when you're not speaking. Uh, also, if you could please be mindful of background noise. I know that Mr. Miller has muted all the microphones, at least initially upon entry. So I do thank you for that courtesy. Also, if you could please make sure to position your camera properly um, so that if you are visible, that the camera is clearly uh, on your face. It's greatly appreciated. Um, if you could please limit distractions, uh, that would also be greatly appreciated. Please feel free at any time to stop the video if you plan to engage in other activities that may be visually distracting. So you're welcome to keep the audio on. However, if you've arrived late and, you know, and you're eating your dinner, please feel free to stop the video feed uh, if you're folding laundry or you have some other household tasks, we completely understand. Please feel free to stop the video um, at any time and keep the audio open. It, I would also ask you to please keep your verbal and online interactions very positive and respectful. Uh, that is greatly appreciated. Uh, I'd like to go to the slide in the PowerPoint, uh, which indicates the Wayne Highlands way, uh, if possible. Thank you very much. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, this is an image that we've been using now over the past couple of years, and I find it very relevant to the situation that we're in. Um, right now, we're discussing our reopening plan. And if you look to the center where the gold lock is located, these are some of the pillars that Wayne Highlands has been built upon and that we still continue uh, to this day. We are, through this plan, at all times trying to remain student-centered. Uh, we are always looking at trying to meet the needs of our students, not only academic, but social, medical, financial, and physical. We like to take a look at all these dimensions of a student and make sure that we are helping students grow in all of these areas. Uh, we also know that face-to-face -face personal interactions are the main way that we are able to establish these student-centered relationships that help our students to build self-esteem, build confidence, uh, build the values and character that have defined uh, the Wayne Highlands community over the years. Um, we know that in this situation, we want to pay very close attention to the culture. And when I say that, I don't just mean the culture of high expectations. Uh, I know that if you follow our newspapers over the years, the Scranton Times Tribune prints a article uh, at the beginning of every summer entitled Grading Your Schools. And for well over a dozen years, uh, the Wayne Highlands School District has been at the top of that list with only a few other schools such as Abington Heights um, in, our, in our Northeast Pennsylvania area. We are very proud of that. Uh, the US News and World Report ranks Wayne Highlands in the top 25% of schools in PA and in the top 20% of schools in the United States. Um, our advanced placement or AP honor roll that we make recently has been a tremendous feather in our cap. The Pittsburgh Business Times has ranked the Wayne Highlands School District in the top 16% of schools in Pennsylvania. And we're at the top with Abington Heights in Northeastern Pennsylvania. But folks, those high expectations for academic achievement are also just as important with our high expectations for the health and safety of our students. And that is where our focus has greatly turned to uh, very recently. We know that we have the grit and the perseverance as a community uh, to make it through this process. And tonight I do wanna talk to you about options that will help your student to grow in many different areas as a person as we go through this reopening plan. Our next slide uh, details the reopening plan. And folks, I would like just really to emphasize this information is available on our website. And I'd like to just highlight that this is not something that we have thrown together uh, just over the past few weeks. I know that many of you worked on a survey near the end of the summer and, excuse me, near the beginning of the summer 
And that survey gave us great insights into your thoughts, uh, your opinions, your input about a return to school. Then in July, meetings with Wayne Memorial Hospital. Um, throughout early July, the, the building of our district pandemic team to be able to conduct meetings in a variety of areas that are related to student success here in our district. Uh, on July 10th, we collaborated with Juan Pawpack and Western Wayne because we share some students through a consortium. And so we wanna make sure that our plans meet or mesh with their plans as well. Uh, continued pandemic meetings, more meetings with Wayne Memorial Hospital, the Wayne Pike Department of Health, the emergency management directors, again, Juan Pawpack, Western Wayne, and this time Delaware Valley School District. Um, continued plans with our internal pandemic team. And I think that many of you know that on July 27th, which was a Monday evening, our health and safety reopening plan was presented to the Wayne Highlands Board of School Directors, uh, who did approve that plan. And that plan has been released on our website uh, beginning on July 29th. Not only is the health and safety plan, and not only is the survey available on the website, but also uh, the timeline is available on the website, as well as a very, very helpful video from Wayne Memorial Hospital uh, that summarizes many aspects of a return to school um, through that great health partner in our community. Um, we'll continue on with our timeline. Uh, this meeting is part of the process of reopening so that hopefully we can answer questions and provide you with information. Um, there will be a parent survey, which I'll discuss a little bit more later, uh, that will be released August 5th. And it's our hope that by August 10th, we'll have a very good idea of where we stand with students and parents' intentions for returning in the fall. Uh, I'd like to go on to the next couple slides, if that's all right, please. Uh, the next slide are some organizations that we have partnered with. Um, again, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Pennsylvania Department of Health, uh, Pennsylvania Department of Ed, Governor Wolf's process to open Pennsylvania, um, as well as you know, the Wayne County Emergency Management and Wayne Memorial Hospital. There has been further collaboration, as I've mentioned earlier, with the Wayne Highlands Education Association, representing our teacher staff. Um, on that next slide, I know that our administrators have collaborated, our school nurses, our building and grounds department, our information technology department, uh, our transportation department, and other school districts have all collaborated. On the next slide, I would like to indicate that there has been an important calendar change in case some of you may not have been aware of that, but our first day of school is now slated for Tuesday, September 8th, in order to make the necessary preparations to reopen school. And our tentative last day of school is on June 8th. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, um, we are in the midst of a global pandemic. Um, and as my next slide indicates, these are uh, very challenging times. Um, we know that socially, emotionally, and mentally for our students who have not gotten to interact with many of their peers as frequently as they have in the past, this has taken a toll on them. Um, we also know that some of you uh, may be dealing with health or medical issues that are directly related to the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, we also are aware that financially, some of you may also have been significantly impacted uh, by this pandemic. And we are sensitive to a variety of those dynamics. We know that many of you approach this meeting tonight, and we know that many of you approach the reopening of school with many different viewpoints. And all your viewpoints are valid, and we understand that your viewpoints are influenced by many of the dynamics in your lives, and we respect that. Uh, we all know that this situation is constantly changing, and I know that um, it's cliche, but I know that sometimes it changes by the month, the week, the day, even the hour. Um, and, I, and I appreciate your flexibility in understanding that this is a fluid situation. As I've mentioned, as a school, you know, our, one of our top priorities is we want to educate your child. 
we want to make sure to prepare your child for post-secondary education or military service or employment in the workforce, uh, attendance at technical or vocational training schools. So that is, as a school by definition, one of our main priorities. It has absolutely come to the forefront that safety and health must be a priority at this time as well. Because of all the changing situations, because of the different viewpoints and perspectives from which you come, we know that we need to provide options in the Wayne Highland School District to meet the different needs of families. And so I would like to proceed to the next slide. Um, it's an infographic that many of you have seen on our website or on our social media. And I will go through these in detail this evening. And I appreciate your patience uh, as we go through this. But just as an overall introduction to the three main options, our, our, one of our first options is traditional learning. Uh, traditional learning would involve your child attending school in person every day, Monday through Friday, okay? Um, that option would obviously maintain the traditional in-person connections with teachers and classmates, um, transportation uh, and lunch, and all other services that we provide, whether it's special education services, uh, IEP, sir, excuse me, uh, mental health services, all the services that we provide would be available to your student because they would be physically here in our school building. Um, health and safety protocols, as I've mentioned a few times, have moved to be one of the top priorities at this time in order to make sure that all the other things that we want to provide, such as education and ancillary services, can truly be provided. A second option, which you'll hear me discuss tonight, is called Wayne Highlands Live. And LIVE is the acronym for Learning in the Virtual Environment. Uh, this is an option that um, some of you might be uh, familiar with to some extent, although we've never officially implemented it here in the Wayne Highlands School District or at Honesdale High School, okay? Wayne Highlands LIVE is where the student will be learning at home and the student will be learning with their Honesdale High School teachers, okay? The student will be instructed either live if they choose, or the student will be instructed through recorded material. And so that provides a student some flexibility in terms of their schedule, which I'll get into later. The students will be receiving the exact same curriculum as their peers in the in-person traditional learning environment are receiving, okay? The exact same curriculum. Instruction may vary slightly only due to the method that's being used to communicate that instruction, but the major elements of instruction will absolutely be in lockstep unison with what students are learning in the classroom in person, okay? Uh, there will be virtual engagement and interaction with their Wayne Highlands teachers and classmates, which I will again talk about later. Uh, the Wayne Highlands virtual campus is a third option that you folks may choose. It's an online education program that is coordinated with uh, VLN partners. That's a virtual learning network. It's a third party contracted organization that does provide education to our students. It is a quality curriculum that is aligned to the Wayne Highlands courses of study. The student would still remain a Wayne Highlands student through this option. And there is a connection through a Wayne Highlands liaison, uh, which I will talk about. So folks, uh, I, I would like to hopefully go through the traditional learning in much more detail because this is the option that will involve significant uh, adaptations to the normal routines over the years that we've implemented here at Honesdale High School. I will also revisit Wayne Highlands Live and the Wayne Highlands Virtual Campus as well. So in the, next, in the next several slides, I'd like to go through the traditional learning, which means in-person, 
here in the, physically here in the school building, okay? This option requires a component of vigilance which begins at home. Parents and students, especially at the high school level, would be asked to pre-screen themselves at home. They would be asked to monitor their temperature, monitor symptoms, so that they can make sure that they are arriving at school in a healthy status. If a student is feeling ill or sick, the recommendation would be to stay home. We would ask students to make sure to call the school to report absences. And we would ask students and parents to maintain communication with the school about their students' health status. Uh, this is an important component to keeping the faculty and staff and all the students at the school uh, safe and healthy, this pre-screening at home. So we appreciate parents' diligence with that effort. Um, in our next slide, as we kind of go through a typical day in the life of a Honesdale High School student coming in person to the building, students would obviously need to be transported to the school. And some students may take a bus. And if they take a bus, you would be able to look at the Wayne Highland School District path to reopening. Uh, we do have the health and safety plan, as I have mentioned, which is on our district website. And on pages 20 and 21 of that health plan, you would be able to see some of the bus transportation guidelines that we will be following. <clears throat> um, students would be seated two per seat um, on the buses. High touch surfaces would be disinfected on a very regular basis, at least once daily, and definitely in between runs. Students would be required to wear face coverings. Folks, at this point, I would like to pause for just a moment, and I would like to digress very briefly uh, just to talk about face coverings. Um, as you know, um, in the state of Pennsylvania, there is a face mask or face covering mandate. Uh, regardless of my personal or professional opinions, uh, regardless, with all due respect, of your personal or professional opinions, if you have reviewed the Wayne Highland School District path to reopening, I think you know that face masks or face coverings are frequently discussed and are a mandatory part of our path to reopening plan. Folks, the, the situation that I would like to avoid at all costs is a student at a bus stop who is trying to board a school bus uh, without a mask. Um, that is not something that a bus driver, a student, or parent, or Mr. Kretschmer or I um, would prefer to deal with. And, and I'm sure you understand that. Um, if your feelings are exceptionally strong about wearing a face mask, I have to be 100% honest with you, okay? Here at Honesdale High School and the buses that transport students to Honesdale High School, we will be expecting students to wear face coverings and wear masks. And we appreciate your support of that. Proactively, if that is something that is a deal breaker, so to speak, for you, you know, you may need to look at option two or option three. I will discuss face masks um, as we continue on throughout the presentation. And I just do, I do want to let you know that students may have opportunities throughout the day where they will not have to be wearing face masks because there will be times through the day where six foot social distancing will be able to be initiated and maintained uh, for an extended period of time. Okay, but I, I thank you for your patience with that digression. And I really folks just wanted to be 100% honest with you. Okay, back to busing and transportation. Um, the bus driver um, and any bus driver monitors uh, will be uh, washing and sanitizing hands uh, frequently. Uh, food and drink would not be permitted on those buses. Um, buses will be aired out when not in use and between runs. Um, some bus drivers may institute protocols in which same household family members are seated together um, as those students typically uh, are in close proximity within their home anyway. Um, there will be organized loading and unloading of buses uh, from back to front and then from front to back as they disembark from the, from the buses. Uh, to the extent that temperatures allow, windows will be open for fresh air. 
Uh, for those of you who have students who may ride a van, the same protocols would occur in those vans. Um, and families are also welcome to drive their students to school, uh, which does take me to my next bullet point. We will still implement our parent drop off and pick up procedures as we normally do in the main circle uh, at Honesdale High School. We also know that at the high school level, student drivers uh, do transport themselves to school. We would ask that if students are transporting a friend of theirs, we would ask that if those students are from different households, that they would strongly consider wearing masks to transport their friends in the vehicle. Um, also, uh, we, we will be asking our students to remain in those vehicles in that parking lot until approximately 8:10, uh, in which we will uh, have those students enter the building using a socially distancing model, okay? We do have a few students who are close enough to school that they're able to walk and they will be able to do so and enter the building, okay? Uh, a typical day then in a Honesdale High School student's life, uh, at this time on the next slide, they would walk into uh, our building for uh, our arrival procedures. Uh, many of you may already know the cafeteria as well as our gymnasium are typically used where students can wait until the homeroom bell rings to proceed to homeroom. Uh, we are going to expand our social distancing by also utilizing our auditorium and our LGI in the morning so that we can safely distance students as much as possible um, in those uh, large areas uh, in the morning. Um, at that time then, uh, we will probably begin dismissing earlier than 810 when we typically do, and we'll begin dismissing in a staggered manner from those different locations so that students may go to their home rooms. Uh, we will not be using uh, assigned lockers uh, to start off our school year uh, until further notice um, as the lockers are placed one above another and the lockers are in exceptionally close proximity to each other. Um, I am still open to the idea of staggered locker usage if we need to go in that direction. So folks, I hope you understand I'm rolling out what I would consider to be plan A for the high school, uh, but please know uh, we do have plan B and plan C for many of these different aspects of operation that we can call upon. Um, we are permitting students to carry backpacks uh, throughout the school day. And again, we would try to emphasize with students and parents that they should be carrying items that are school related, items that are necessary for their school day, and that other ancillary objects or materials uh, be kept at home so that they can focus on their education as well as health and safety, okay? I know that we have some student athletes who typically uh, bring uh, large quantities of athletic gear with them. And again, you know, one of our plans is to have students deposit some of those things uh, in their homeroom so they don't have to carry their football bag to every single classroom throughout the day. Um, however, we do have backup plans if we find that um, homeroom storage of equipment uh, is not a feasible solution. We do have backup plans for that, okay? Um, after arrival and students have moved to homeroom, I'd like to proceed to our next, um, our next slide, if you could please. Um, our next slide has to do with transitions and hallways. As I mentioned, we plan to have staggered dismissal from classes to promote social distancing. Um, one model that could be used uh, might have to do with odd or even room numbers. And so, you know, we might say, okay, odd rooms will move now to odd rooms. Students uh, may move from odd to even and so forth and so on. We may institute a plan where students are dismissed uh, alphabetically. A through G is dismissed first. After a few minutes, H through O could move. P through Z could move. It will no longer take the four minutes that it would typically take a student to move because students do not need to stop at lockers. Students simply need to proceed to their next classroom. We may even use a system in which students in the front of a room are dismissed first and then we proceed on with students moving uh, toward the back of the room for dismissal. Uh, we are going to have extended transition times to allow students to move to the next class 
because it will take a little bit more time to move the school in smaller chunks, so to speak. We plan to have directional markers on the floor to guide the traffic flow through the hallways um, and on the large stairwell by the main office, if you are familiar with our building. So those will be two-way traffic flow, but it would just be one line moving one direction, one line moving the other direction. Um, almost like lemmings or penguins, right? Um, we will designate some of our more narrow stairwells in the building. They will be designated one way up and they'll be designated one way down. Because we'll be staggering dismissals from classrooms, I'm sure that some of you have thought, well, all right, so there'll be students waiting outside of a classroom then to be able to get in. Uh, Mr. Kretschmer and I have measured our hallways. Uh, we do know that when students are masked, they will be able to move through the hallways um, with uh, appropriate social distancing for masked students at that time. Uh, we do know that we will be able to position markers on the floor outside of classrooms. So as teachers dismiss students, they will be able to allow the entry of other students who are waiting and we will be able to keep the flow of students going into a room and then out of a room and we'll be able to successfully transition students. Uh, during these transitions, students will have opportunities to wash and sanitize their hands. Uh, students will be expected to wear face coverings most definitely during these transitions. Um, and then at the very end of the day, we plan on staggering dismissal from seventh period and that will most likely be based on bus runs um, so that we can get students out to the most distant buses in the bus line first, okay? A typical day in the life of a Honesdale High School student. Again, I'm still going through the traditional learning and I'm moving on to that next slide. Uh, we are talking about students who are in person physically here in the building. And one of the largest parts of their day will be the time spent in the classrooms, okay? Uh, we are looking to absolutely maximize social distancing. We're looking to balance classes to allow maximum social distancing. So even more than we ever have in the past, we are absolutely trying to get our class sizes to be at 25. I cannot promise that every class will be at 25. But what I can promise you is that we're going to look to maximally socially distance students uh, within classrooms. Again, please keep in mind, depending upon the number of students who opt for the live in-person version, uh, attending school traditionally, physically here in the building, and the number of students that may choose one of our two remote options, you know, that will also uh, determine how much we're able to socially distance um, in our classrooms, okay? Um, students will wear face coverings when six foot social distancing cannot be achieved in a classroom, okay? Um, Hand sanitizers will be available and there will be opportunities to wash hands. Uh, cleaning products in classrooms will be available um, for individuals to wipe down desks uh, in between classes if they choose, okay? Uh, we would ask that students not share any materials uh, unless those materials are able to be disinfected uh, and our teachers are aware of that. Um, so, you know, while some students might share certain equipment or tools, for instance, in the shop, um, students would be expected not to share those items unless they can be wiped down immediately before being passed from one student to the next. Um, we are permitting teachers to conduct classes outdoors if they would choose. So that might give opportunities for people to be outdoors and socially distance uh, when the weather permits. Um, we are looking or we have begun a process of replacing tables where students sit two to a table in classrooms. We are looking into a process of replacing those with desks, okay? Um, in some subject areas, uh, I'll use the art room as an example, students typically would sit four to a table at a, and they'd be facing each other at a large wooden butcher block type of work area. You know, what we're looking at doing there is putting in uh, plastic dividers uh, between the students so that uh, we can still maintain the educational component of that particular class, yet make sure to provide barriers that keep our students healthy and safe. Um, we're gonna be looking to limit the distribution and collection 
of any type of materials. Uh, the fortunate dimension of Honsdale High School is that for years now our high school students have worked in Google Classroom and so almost all of their assignments would be able to be handed in uh, electronically uh, either through an email or potentially through a photograph that's sent or, or through Google Classroom. So there are many options for electronic submission which will cut down tremendously on paper submission. Um, our Honesdale High School classrooms have windows, and so we're going to be utilizing windows to uh, make sure to keep uh, the fresh air ventilation circulating in the rooms. Our next slide talks about another major aspect of a Honesdale High School student who's physically in the building in person, and that would be the lunchtime. Um, we would expect that students would wear their face coverings while obtaining lunch. We would expect students to follow social distancing and traffic flow markings as they go through the kitchen to pick up a school lunch. Obviously students that bring their own lunch would be able to report to one of the areas uh, where we are providing uh, dining areas. So uh, those students would be free to go and observe social distancing, uh, but the students going through the line for the lunch, there would be particular markings which would help guide them in terms of direction and, and social distancing. Uh, protective barriers uh, will be installed in our cafeteria serving line. Uh, there will be a contactless, pay contactless payment system where barcode scanners will be used for students so they will not actually have to touch a pin pad to enter a number. Um, now when students are eating, they would be able to remove their face coverings and we would be guaranteeing six feet of social distancing between students while eating. Uh, we're also going to avoid across the table seating styles. Uh, we're going to utilize our cafeteria, um, including outdoor dining areas uh, when weather permits. We're also going to be using our auditorium and the hallways surrounding our auditorium and kitchen to provide additional seating for lunches. Uh, we're going uh, we're gonna to be using prepackaged condiments and we're also gonna eliminate self-serve food items uh, from the line. And so now our cafeteria staff will serve every single item to students um, throughout, their, throughout the line experience, okay? Uh, obviously, there'll be frequent regular cleaning of the kitchen and all dining areas. And again, students will have access to hand washing and sanitizing opportunities uh, before and after lunch. Uh, I'll tell you what, folks, uh, I, again, I thank you for your patience, and I, I, am, um, I am getting into the final stretch of the presentation. So uh, again, I can't thank you enough uh, for your patience. Um, what I would like to talk about in the next slide, um, now that we've kind of gone through most of the major aspects of a high school student's day, here at Honesdale High School, I just want to let you know about our sickness protocol or, or our nurse's office, our health suite, so to speak. Uh, we are fortunate uh, in Wayne Highlands to have a school nurse in every building, uh, and, and I, I am very grateful to our administration and school board for that commitment. Um, we are going to continuously educate our students uh, to recognize the signs and symptoms of COVID-19. Any injured or ill student will still report to the nurse's office as usual. Our nurse is obviously going to perform a screening. Uh, where she is initially going to try to determine if there are any signs or symptoms of COVID-19, okay? Students with COVID-related concerns, they will be isolated, they will be transported home by a parent or guardian. Other students in the health suite will be in a separate area and they would be treated as normal um, and then hopefully return to class or transported home by a parent or guardian um, in, in the event that they are too ill to remain at school for some other non-COVID related reason. Obviously, there'll be appropriate follow-up communication. Also for students who have a higher medical risk uh, due to this pandemic and due to an underlying condition they may have, we are absolutely open to maintaining consistent communication uh, with administration and our school nurse. Um, so I just wanted to let you folks know a little bit about that. Um, the next slide that I'd like to take a look at is just a few other protocols uh, that we're going to be implementing at the high school. Obviously, there'll be significant signage 
throughout the building, which will be encouraging hand washing, face coverings, and social distancing. Um, we are going to ask students to bring their own bo water bottles or to purchase individual water bottles here at school, uh, but we are not going to be using our water fountains, um, and we do plan to make provisions for water um, in the cafeteria uh, or in our dining areas uh, throughout the lunch period, okay? We're implementing a one-way traffic pattern in our main office uh, so that people aren't going against the grain, so to speak, uh, coming into more face-to-face -face contact with each other. Uh, we are gonna institute a one-way traffic pattern there. Uh, we've installed a series of clear plexiglass dividers in high traffic areas in our main office um, to protect our students as well as uh, our staff members. Uh, we're also looking to limit visitors as much as possible uh, by utilizing telephone calls and virtual meeting platforms. So we are, we, we are hoping to you know, minimize outside interactions in our building, uh, which could you know, potentially lead to exposure. So we are looking at doing that. Um, in our next slide, um, I know that uh, in high schools, typically Mr. Kretschmer and I conduct some large group assemblies. You know, on the first day of school, we'll meet with the different classes to go over ways to be successful, uh, expectations of our handbook, et cetera. Um, obviously for now, we're gonna be curtailing uh, large group assemblies or gatherings, okay? Um, however, information will still be communicated to students uh, through our public address system at the high school. Uh, we do have an announcement app on the student iPads, which we will continuously encourage students to use more and more. Uh, we have a one call now telephone, email, and text system, which we'll be using to help keep parents in the loop. Um, we will be expecting our students to use their school email. And this is even for students who are in person, okay? Our Honesdale High School Instagram will be very active. Our website, including Facebook and Twitter, will have exceptionally valuable information. Um, I know that some of you are familiar with the fact that last spring, uh, we used several mailings, the old fashioned way, snail mail, to communicate information to parents and students. And if necessary, we will do that. And uh, Mr. Kretschmer and I also look forward to conducting virtual meetings uh, with our students uh, to try to make sure to have large group assemblies uh, in that format. Um, the next slide that I'd like to talk about really starts to bridge the gap between the other two options. And, and again, I thank you for your patience. Um, after sports and extracurriculars, I do just have the other two options that I really would like to highlight. Um, but this is a nice transition because sports and extracurricular activities are available to students no matter what option they choose. Um, to, we have taken our guidance um, on, on that next slide. We have taken our guidance from the Pennsylvania Department of Education, PD, excuse me, Pennsylvania Department of Health, the governor's office, the PIAA, the LIAA, and Wayne Memorial Health. Um, there was an athletics health and safety plan that was developed and approved by the Wayne Highlands Board of School Directors. And we do plan to continue to implement the approved protocols and any future guidance regarding sports and athletics. Um, for those of you who have student athletes who may be involved in some preseason or off season types of activities, um, I know that as parents, some of you are very familiar with the temperature checks, uh, the health survey questions students are answering on a daily basis, uh, their face covering protocols, um, the, the non-sharing of equipment, uh, the heavy emphasis on the six foot social distancing and the grouping in cohorts for these preseason or off-season athletics. Uh, knock on wood, so far that is, is going well and, and we're grateful that students have had these opportunities um, to participate in activities and, and kind of reconnect with uh, some of their coaches and, and their students. Folks, on the next slide, I would like to discuss option number two a little bit more. Most of my presentation today um, has been spent on option one, traditional in-person 
physically attending uh, school. Um, and that's not, be, that, that's not because I'm an advocate of that particular point. Like I said before, I completely understand parents come to this situation with different perspectives. And I completely understand that you have to make decisions that are in the best interest of your child and your family. And I, I completely understand that. So please, I don't want anyone to be under the impression just because I spent more time or had more slides on the traditional uh, learning that I believe that that one should carry more weight in any way. Um, I just knew that that one was the one that involved uh, significant adaptations to how we typically do business here at Honesdale High School. I would like to spend some time on the Wayne Highlands live option. Um, again, I wanna emphasize what this would look like, okay? If you're a sophomore and you're at home and you've chosen option number two and you have Mr. Kloss, second period for civics and government, okay, and it's 920, you're gonna be able to log in through a virtual platform. Most likely it's going to be Zoom. And Mr. Kloss will be in his room with his computer. And Mr. Kloss, just like you and I can all see each other in a Brady Bunch type of setting here on Zoom, Mr. Kloss will be able to see his students from home live, logged into Zoom right on the computer, okay? And Mr. Kloss will be able then to teach his lesson from his room to the students who are physically in front of him in the desks, but also the student who's synchronously live joining him at home will be able to enjoy the same lesson. That student would also be able to ask questions live and interact with Mr. Kloss and the other students in the room uh, to try to benefit their learning, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, we also recognize though that maybe, maybe mom is home and maybe mom has to use the computer and mom has to use the bandwidth in order to complete her telework from home so that you know, she can continue to remain employed and you know, put food on the table. And maybe the student can't log in live to Mr. Kloss's class second period. Okay, Mr. Kloss is gonna be providing some type of a recording. Maybe Mr. Kloss will record something um, the night before you know, uh, in his classroom or from home, and he will record his presentation. Maybe Mr. Kloss will simply record the Zoom session where he is conducting live instruction with his students. Mr. Kloss would then be able to provide that recorded version to a student who'd be able to, let's say, log in and view that at 5 p.m. when mom is done with work, has access to the computer and the bandwidth. Now the student can asynchronously do the work that Mr. Kloss has assigned through Google Classroom, see the recording of the presentation of the content so that that student is able to complete that work. So this does allow tremendous flexibility. If you choose Wayne Highlands Live, you could log in live to some classes and you could do some classes that day asynchronous. You could also log in live one day and the next day, you could also do all of those classes asynchronously. Okay, so there is a lot of flexibility there. Um, the Honesdale High School teachers, again, it is your own Honesdale High School teachers. They would be easily accessible if you logged in live during class. They could also be easily accessible through an email or a telephone call to their extension where you could leave a voicemail for a return call later, okay? Folks, the Wayne Highlands Live option is the exact same curriculum as the students in the classroom are learning. And so if you decided to return from option number two, Wayne Highlands Live, at the end of the first marking period, and you decided for the second marking period that you're gonna come back to school, you would not miss a single beat you would be in lockstep exactly with right where, let's say Mr. Kloss left off in his civics and government class. You would not miss a beat, okay? Um, the other thing that I have already hinted at that I'd like to emphasize one more time is logging in live 
does give you that direct interaction, not only with the teacher, but also uh, with your classmates, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, the Wayne Highlands Live option does not require any type of a registration procedure in the Honesdale High School office. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that, okay? Um, the next thing that I'd like to, um, the next thing that I'd like to talk about um, is the Wayne Highlands Virtual Campus option. Uh, the Wayne Highlands uh, Virtual Campus, um, it is an option that we implemented last year, okay? A student does still remain a Wayne Highlands student. Mr. Roos does serve as a point of contact to try to help students resolve any technical difficulties or to help students make contacts with the teachers who are teaching those courses. It is a quality curriculum. It is aligned to the Wayne Highlands School District curriculum, okay? Again, this is like option number two, which is the live option. Like that option, this is also a virtual or online program. You do have email access to the VLN teachers. The VLN teachers are not Honesdale High School teachers. They are separate teachers through a third party contracted organization that does provide, like I said, a quality curriculum. If you were to choose the Wayne Highlands virtual campus, this would involve making sure to register for the Wayne Highlands virtual campus through our Honesdale High School main office. Uh, it would be like reg it would be like you know registering for a school within our district. You would need to fill out registration paperwork. Okay. So, folks, again. Uh, I, I tremendously appreciate your patience with me. Uh, I, I know we've, we've gone about 50 minutes here. Uh, I, I can't thank you enough. On my next slide, I would um, like to just um, try to discuss a, a few parameters uh, regarding questions. Um, I would ask you to please use the chat feature, which I can see that many of you have begun to use uh, for asking questions. I would ask that you hopefully would be offering questions that you think will benefit Honesdale High School parents as a whole group this evening. Um, if you have specific questions about an individual student uh, or you have questions that you wanna discuss privately, please, by all means, feel free to contact me by telephone. Um, I have put my phone number down there to the high school uh, or you can email me. Um, if you're unable to access the chat feature, um, I would ask you to uh, please politely and respectfully um, unmute yourself um, and you can verbally ask that question. At this time, what I'm going to do is I am going to open up that chat window and I am going to go ahead and start answering uh, the chat questions uh, in the order that they received, okay? Uh, first question, how are you managing the influx of students in bathrooms dur during transition periods to wash their hands? How often will the bathrooms be disinfected uh, during the day? Um, very good question. So as far as the influx of students in the bathrooms, um, we do plan on marking off um, certain sinks or stalls that we would not be permitting students to use in order to try to maintain social distancing. Um, we also are contemplating signage on doors so that when a student exits, another student can then enter. Um, we also will be uh, potentially having students be monitored by other staff members or other teachers so that we can kind of monitor the flow of traffic in and out of bathrooms, okay? Um, how often will bathrooms be disinfected during the day? Uh, we do plan to regularly clean those restrooms throughout the day. Uh, we do have a third and a second floor bathroom. Um, and we also have a handicap restroom, uh, which is right outside the nurse's office and the nurse also has a restroom. We have a 400 wing restroom as well. And our custodians are gonna be constantly, you know, moving throughout the building on a rotating basis to disinfect those bathrooms, okay? Next question, will there be some type of orientation for freshmen? Uh, absolutely, Mr. Kretschmer and I um, have already talked about plans for the freshman orientation. The freshman orientation will most likely this year be a virtual event. Uh, very similar to this event. And uh, Mr. Kretschmer and I will be happy to present a lot of the operational procedures to our students uh, who are incoming freshmen, 
okay? Um, there's a question about will there be any special privileges for seniors? Um, I would just ask that individual um, if they could please maybe uh, clarify that um, in a chat uh, that's specific to me, um, or if they could clarify that to the entire group. Um, our seniors do have um, some special privileges. We do allow seniors to, uh, to have early dismissal um, that can be built into their schedule. Um, beyond that, I, I can't think necessarily of um, other privileges that seniors are afforded, um, but uh, I know Mr. Kretschmer might be able to um, give me some more that I could share with you, um, or if you clarify that, I might be able to address that a little bit uh, more specifically, okay? Uh, will a six, a six student who normally uses the traditional plan be able to participate in live learning uh, until their il illness has passed? So that's a good question. Um, if a student um, is experiencing a short-term um, type of medical illness, uh, they're gonna be out for a few days. Uh, I would very much like to be able to flow seamlessly between live and the classroom. If the student's absence or illness uh, becomes uh, extended, um, you know, that's something else that we, we would have to discuss if we're gonna make a full transition over to live. But the answer to that question is, uh, yes, I believe on a case-by-case -case basis, that is something that we would absolutely consider and we could make that work. Uh, since students are wearing masks, is it possible to lift the dress code for boys to allow them to wear shorts as girls are allowed to wear dresses uh, to stay cooler? Um, again, Mr. Kretschmer and I, um, we will be happy to consider that question um, and discuss that um, further at this point. Um, I, I can't give uh, a specific answer about that uh, for now. So uh, I appreciate your understanding. Um, I do know that um, our students, um, I, do, I do know that our school community is continuously complimented um, whenever we're involved in any extracurricular activities um, for uh, our, our dress code. Um, and, and I do appreciate our parents' cooperation with that um, as well as our, our students' cooperation with that. So I, I do wanna thank you for that. Um, maybe too many books to carry in backpacks all day. When it, would any books be available digitally on their iPads or other options to leave textbooks in their classes? Uh, the answer to that is yes to both questions. Um, some of our textbooks are actually um, in a digital format already for students. Um, some teachers um, do not heavily rely on that textbook, so that textbook may very well be able to stay at home. Um, and yes, students may be able to leave textbooks in classes, and uh, you know, those textbooks may be in designated areas uh, for those students. So those are definitely options that we can absolutely implement. Okay, will the school be taking temperatures of all students upon entrance to the school? So the answer to that is, is no. Um, our um, school's health and safety plan that's uh, delineated on our district website does not involve the taking of temperatures um, each day by st for students and staff members, okay? Um, how will gym class be handled? Uh, the use of locker rooms. Um, we are still planning on continuing to have gym. We are still planning on using our gymnasium for those activities. We are not planning to use our locker rooms uh, we would be reverting more to a elementary type of situation in terms of dress for phys ed. Um, in other words, I know that elementary students on PE day, they just make sure that they come to school with sneakers or sneakers to change into, and they are permitted to wear the clothes for PE that they came to, to school in. So at this point, that is, that is what we're planning to do. We are also planning to have our phys ed instructors use outdoor activities um, as much as possible uh, with our students. Uh, I know that Mrs. Pichotti over the years has been very creative. Um, some of you may have students who've been involved in her PE classes where she utilizes um, the dance um, app uh, or a dance video, uh, so to speak, a video game almost um, in the auditorium. And so opportunities to socially distance uh, much further than six feet apart and spread out and engage in those types of new creative activities uh, are gonna be welcome. Um, how will foods related classes be handled 
in both option number one and two. Okay, so foods related classes, that's a very good question. Um, foods related classes, um, obviously those uh, ladies, Mrs. Vendor and Mrs. Vulo are gonna be working to have students masked. There's gonna be um, hand washing protocols there. Um, the students are gonna be socially distanced. Um, as far as working together in a group and sharing instruments, um, things are gonna have to be a little bit more individualized in terms of making individual type of food items, um, students not sharing food items with each other, um, students consuming their own food items uh, and things of that nature. Now, option number two, uh, I'm sure that Mrs. Vendor and Mrs. Vulo uh, would be able to uh, get creative in terms of using online uh, type or virtual types of activities where if a student chooses option two, they're gonna be engaged in um, alternative food related activities from home uh, that might be able to demonstrate uh, their, their food knowledge. Um, some examples I could think of would be um, cooking or baking at home, taking pictures and videos of those activities. Um, students may be able to um, watch something from home either on their iPad or let's say on the Food Network um, and then possibly write a reflection regarding that. So I do think there are some creative options that our teachers could implement. Another question, will there be sanitizing stations throughout the building? Uh, yes, there will be. And those are, those are being um, installed and worked upon um, you know, this summer. So there is gonna be a greater number of those stations um, and they'll be made available to students. Um, how will security be addressed if students will be going outside? I think it's great that they go outdoors. So I have consulted already with our Director of Safety and Security, uh, Mr. Joe Labasso. Um, as you know, Mr. Labasso is a um, you know, certified school police officer. Um, both Mr. Labasso and I do feel comfortable with students going outdoors. Folks, as a matter of fact, students have been going outdoors for the past few years for classes. Um, the PE teachers will take students outside uh, for a walk. Um, sometimes in the snow, um, students will go outside for snow-related activities. Um, we are encouraging, and I have in a faculty meeting, encouraged our teachers to go outside in areas that are close to our main high school building. You know, our front circle, very close to the main entrance. Um, our courtyard, a relatively well-secluded area with large grassy areas um, for classes outside. So um, I definitely don't wanna compromise school security. Um, however, I do think that we can do it um, safely uh, here in this situation. Can students switch between traditional and live? And if so, how frequently? Um, that's a very good question. And I apologize that I may not have um, answered that question uh, very thoroughly. Um, we are expecting students and, and actually, now that I recall, I didn't skip it. I do have another couple slides just as concluding slides to the question and answer session. And I know it's on, I know it's on my second to last slide. Uh, I think it is, no, I had planned to talk about it. We would like parents and students to make an educational declaration where they stick with the commitment and the option that they've chosen for an entire marking period, okay? So we would encourage parents and students to ask me or ask their counselor or ask Mr. Kretschmer as many questions as possible prior to making that educational declaration, okay? So um, what we'd like to do is we'd like students to stick with that option for the entire first marking period. Um, we don't want students switching back and forth between traditional and live unless of course, there's some type of a medical uh, situation that would necessitate that. And again, that would just be on a, uh, a, a, an occasional case-by-case -case basis, okay? So the next question, if a student or teacher have, a fever, uh, have fever symptoms or test positive, will the parents be notified that their child may have been exposed and will they have to quarantine? Excellent question, which I know is on many people's minds. So folks, I can answer this question by, by giving you some of the procedures that we will follow, okay? If a teacher or student were to test positive and we were made aware of that through a communication from that parent or that student, 
<clears throat> or that teacher, okay? One of the first things that I would do is, you know, I would immediately notify my superintendent, Mr. Gregory Frigoletto, okay? We would then kick into a procedure where we contact uh, medical professionals that we consult with here at our school on a daily basis, okay? We would convey to the medical professional as much information as we were able to find out from that teacher or that student or that parent, okay? And then, based on the advice of medical health professionals, we would then be in communication with the parent or the teacher or the student, and we would take the necessary steps. Some of those steps might include sending a letter to students who may have been in that classroom. That's not unlike other letters you may have received over the years when three or four students receive or have contracted, let's say, lice in an elementary classroom. I'm sure some of you have received, you know, letters at home uh, about something like that. So it may take that format. There may be a personal phone call. There may be quarantining of that teacher. There may be quarantining of that student. There may be quarantining of other students in that room. We would really go to the medical advice of those medical professionals and we would go step by step through that process, okay? So I, I hope that gives you some general guidelines about the direction that we would move in. Another question, students are only to have water bottles that are disposable. Uh, no, that's not true. And I apologize if in any way uh, I, I conveyed that in, inaccurately. If a student wants to bring their water bottle uh, from home, that's absolutely fine. We do prefer clear water bottles. Um, however, uh, a water bottle from home is completely fine. Um, disposable plastic water bottles from home or disposable plastic water bottles that are purchased at the school uh, are completely acceptable as well. Um, as far as the bathrooms and the gym, if our kids try in school and don't like wearing their mask all day, can they choose to get homeschooled? Okay, so um, one thing that I would like to, <clears throat> one thing, I believe I've already answered the question about bathrooms where only certain stalls and sinks are used. High school students who are mature and older will be expected to, to some extent, self-regulate and make sure that there are not too many students in the bathroom. Uh, we are looking at monitors or teachers to control flow of traffic into and out of bathrooms. So I think I already answered that. Gym, I think I answered. We are moving forward with gym. At this time, we're not using locker rooms or gym lockers at this time. Now, the next question, if kids try in school and don't like wearing their mask, folks, I can't emphasize this enough. Proactively, I would ask you to please have your student wear a mask then throughout the day later this summer, okay? Actually, even now because really the educational declaration needs to be made by August 10th. So I've actually read this in some psychiatric journals. Uh, there's been news stories about preparing, let's say elementary students for coming to school with a mask. You know, you wear it for an hour. The next day you wear it for an hour and a half. Next day you increase the amount of time you're wearing the mask. So folks, I would really recommend proactively that you have your student wear a mask from 8.30 to 3, and if it's just absolutely an impossibility for them, then by all means, you've already gotten your decision, and you can proactively make your choice about your child's educational option, okay? The only other thing that I want to make sure I clarify is, in this particular question, someone mentioned the phrase homeschooling, and I, I, do, want to, I do want to mention to you folks Actually, I didn't put this as one of my three options, but for years now, homeschooling where the parent educates the student at home has always been an option in the Wayne Highland School District. It's different from cyber school, although some parents will use online applications or online software through their homeschooling process, okay? But Homeschooling is still actually an option that some parents have used for years where they are the educator. That process goes through Mr. Gerard Burns Jr. Mr. Burns is the 
assistant principal at the Wayne Highlands Middle School, and he is in charge of our homeschooling program, and parents would have to contact him if they want to use homeschooling where they as the parent declare themselves the educator and their child then completes work and a portfolio that is evaluated. Um, and that's a different process than the live option where Honesville High School teachers are teaching virtually. It's different than the Wayne Highlands virtual campus and it's obviously different from in person, okay? Will thermometers be provided to every family attending to be certain that everyone's temperature is taken before arrival? Our school district is not planning on providing thermometers uh, to every family. However, um, if there is in family, excuse me, if there is a family in need of a thermometer, uh, I know that our school would be happy to work with you and I would ask you to please contact me um, individually. Okay, will you have to quarantine after going on a vacation? So that's an, ex that's an excellent question. Um, to answer that question, if a student goes to a state that is on the Pennsylvania list where the student is recommended to quarantine after they come back from that vacation to that state for 14 days, um, yes, we would expect that student to quarantine and follow um, what our state has, um, what our state has delineated um, as protocols for out-of-state vacationing and out-of-state travel, okay? Does the same exact protocol stand if the county goes yellow? So that's a very good question. Um, if you take a look at our school district's health and safety reopening plan, I know that it is organized in terms of red, yellow, and green, okay? So as far as yellow goes, um, some protocols may obviously change and those are delineated in our district-wide district plan. Okay. Uh, as a senior, will I be able to come in for Wood Tech and do all my other classes uh, online? Um, so again, uh, that that's a very good question, um, and I mean, I, I I don't I don't mean any disrespect whatsoever. I guess my question would be, um, if a student feels well enough to come in for Wood Tech, then I would hope that they would feel well enough that their situation would allow them to also be here in person for their other classes. Again, I understand where the student's coming from. Wood Tech is more of a hands-on class, which I completely understand. Whereas let's say English or math class might be less hands-on. Um, the options that we're looking at right now are five days a week, in person, full time. And the other option that we're looking at is the Wayne Highland School District live where you are completely um, at home virtually with your Wayne Highland School District teachers, okay? Those are the options that we're looking at. The next question, if a student chooses option two, remote learning through school, how will science labs such as biology be conducted? So again, that's a very good question. Um, I know that as far as biology is concerned, um, students uh, may be able to do some labs uh, online virtually. Um, being a former science teacher, one thing that I happen to know off the top of my head, um, there are virtual frog dissection labs um, online. Okay, so I know that some labs uh, would probably have to be done virtually. I know that other labs um, a student might be able to do um, because they don't involve necessarily equipment that's germane only to to a school district. For example, a population, uh, a population dynamics type of lab that looks at food webs and food chains, um, as well as um, population increases and decreases involving predators and prey, okay? Again, some of those labs are done, done with small cutout pieces of paper where a rabbit population increases and so more pieces of paper are laid on a table and then, you know, then the owl population can increase and more pieces of paper. So some, some of the items uh, might be able to be done through paper and pencil manipulatives um, or virtual manipulatives as well, okay? Um, another question, what will happen to in-person classes 
if one or more people do show up with corona, will the school be shut down and students will transfer to do live or cyber instead? I believe I have answered that question um, a, a few moments ago, but again, we're gonna follow uh, the medical advice of medical professionals when we have a coronavirus confirmed case, and then we will take the appropriate steps, whether it's quarantining one individual or an entire class or part of the building or you know what have you. So um, I, I don't want anyone to uh, become alarmed. Uh, we're gonna just handle those situations case by case, and we're gonna follow the guidance and advice of those medical professionals uh, to the T, okay? Is there a maximum number of students who can attend the traditional in-school program? If so, what is that number and how will those spaces be given out? No, there's not a maximum number of students who can attend traditional in-school. Um, we, we do have the capacity at the high school. Um, when students are masked to um, have students inside of, of classrooms, um, and as I said, Sometimes those classrooms will require that the students are masked the entire time um, because we simply cannot manage the six foot social distancing between students. Um, however, there will be classes where students may be able to be distanced six feet and, and remove that mask. So there is not a maximum number. We are able to accommodate students in our classrooms, okay? Uh, what if kids do in school and get sick? Can they still do online when they're home? Uh, again, I, I do believe we've answered that question as well. For a short period of time, um, we will absolutely um, uh, you know, make some accommodations uh, that they can join in live, um, not through the Wayne Highlands virtual campus, but through the live option, okay? If that becomes a protracted situation, uh, we, we would on a case-by-case -case basis probably need to take a look at making a different educational declaration for that student, okay? Uh, to clarify, the same nurse's room will be used for even non-sick students. Um, student falls and is hurt, has to see the nurse. A student with possible COVID symptoms now enters the nurse's room. Student A, who hurt themselves, now has been exposed. Student B is tested. Doesn't the per plan room have to be quarantined for 24 hours? How will this work for the nurse's office? Um, so folks, again, our nurse's suite is large enough that it will be able to be divided into uh, an area where asymptomatic students will be able to be treated for their um, injuries, minor cuts and scrapes, um, a headache, things that seem to be non-COVID related, and a separate area of our nurse's health suite uh, will be able to be uh, sequestered for students who may be indicating COVID-related symptoms, okay? As for extracurriculars, will there be a school musical this year? How will that work? Can students taking the live option instead still participate in extracurriculars and sports in person? Um, so at this point, our Honesdale High School musical is in the spring. And at this point, um, I can't make a, a declaration with any degree of confidence uh, regarding whether or not we will have a high school musical uh, this year or not. Um, obviously, if things change for the better um, and you know there's a vaccine developed at the end of the year and boy, the cases just plummet to virtually none, folks, I think you know that would be a scenario where we could consider that possibility. Um, if things continue as they are right now, uh, I'm skeptical that a, a high school musical would be a, able to occur, okay? Um, the second part of that question, can students taking the live option instead still participate in extracurriculars and sports in person? Um, again, um, if, a student, if a student's situation is not amenable to attending school in person each day, I guess I would have a question about why they would want to, well, I know they would want to because it's fun, but I, I'm not exactly sure why they would wanna participate in an extracurricular or sports in person if they're not going to be in school for academics in person. However, the answer to the question is yes. Uh, students who choose the live or the Wayne Highlands virtual campus option can participate in extracurriculars 
um, as well as as well as sports. Okay. Um, another question: If I'm not feeling good and stay home, would I be able to do virtual and not get an absence? Okay, so so that is a good question. Uh, I, I and it's slightly different from one that was asked earlier. Um, yes, if a student's going to stay at home, then I, I see no reason why they couldn't do the virtual for that day. Um, and as long as they've logged in live, uh, or as long, long as long as they've shown evidence uh, that they have asynchronously completed work, um, you know, we are going to Mr. Kretschmer, um, who really is in charge of attendance. Uh, he and I are both going to be flexible regarding that. Okay, again, we would not expect that to be a long protracted situation. Okay, uh, maybe a silly question, but will the teachers need to teach in front of the computer or record a separate video? Um, right now, I have explained to my teachers that they're absolutely welcome to do either one. I have recommended to our teachers um, that if they are going to record live in their classroom while they're actually teaching, that really the camera is pointed onto the teacher and really not on the other students. However, if students are making a presentation, I would expect that the teacher would focus the camera on a student making a presentation because that will educa educationally benefit all the students in the room. Um, if a teacher prefers to record something um, separately and not do the recording live, that is also another option that I'm completely comfortable with um, that teachers can provide to the students, okay? However, if a student wants to log in live, the teacher does need to make sure that they're available to the student during the live session, but the teacher doesn't have to provide the live recording. They can provide something that's already pre-recorded that has the same content, okay? So good question. Uh, is there an option that students can be in school for traditional two days and three days live? Um, uh, folks, uh, we would, there is not. So I'll, I'll just give the simple direct answer. There is not. Uh, we would like students to commit to five days a week either live, which is at home with their Honesdale High School teachers, either synchronously or asynchronously, or we'd like students to commit to five days of in-person learning. So at, at this time, those are the two options that, that, we're, that we're leaning toward, okay? Questions about switching between live and in-person are good if kids get sick or can't be there in person. For option number two, how will attendance, assignments, and testing be done? Okay, so for option number two, as far as attendance, assignments, and testing. Attendance, if students are logging in live, uh, will actually be quite easy, okay? Because we'll be able to, uh, you know, a teacher will be able to make note in their attendance exactly what students logged in live, okay? Um, as far as assignments are concerned, assignments will be done through Google Classroom which is a platform that our high school students are very familiar with. Um, and for our incoming freshmen, um, it's a platform that many of them used last year um, in, from March to June. Um, and it's also a very user-friendly platform uh, that students can use. So that's how they would transmit their assignments back and forth between teacher and student. Um, as far as testing, uh, that's a very good question. I've already addressed with my teachers the fact that they may have to contemplate um, different types of assessments. Um, in other words, in a typical classroom, a teacher might give a multiple choice, true, false, and fill in the blank type of a test. Well, if a student is at home and they're using the live version and they're doing it asynchronously, um, unfortunately, uh, there's a few students um, who use their ambition uh, in, a, in, a, in a manner that I would say is, could be used more positively. And so they may be tempted to collaborate with some of their classmates, whereas the students in the classroom in person don't have that opportunity. Um, and so because of that, we wanna maintain academic integrity. And so assessment of students in the live option might be different because they simply you know, can't take uh, a typical multiple choice or true false or fill in the blank. And so there may have to be assignments that um, students complete that that becomes a measure of their understanding and their work productivity. Um, and that becomes um, more a factor in assessing them for a grade, okay? Um, what classes are available in option three? That is a very, very good question. 
in the Wayne Highlands virtual campus, which is not our Honesdale High School teachers, and it's not our exact Honesdale High School classes, okay? Folks, I'll tell you what, here at Honesdale High School, juniors take US history, okay? There's absolutely a US history uh, comparable class in the Wayne Highlands virtual campus. And that's the class that students can sign up for, okay? However, if a student were to transfer back to Honesdale High School from the Wayne Highlands virtual campus, even though that course is aligned with the same content and standards, in that classroom, that teacher may be further behind or further ahead, further ahead, or have covered different topics in history. And so when the student transfers back to Honesdale High School, it may not be the most seamless transition back, okay? Something that I'll also be very upfront with you about is there simply are not class options in the Wayne Highlands virtual campus. Option number three, there are simply not options that match up to Honesdale High School options. Okay, so that, that is a very good question. Are AP courses offered with the VLN option? Yes, they are. Um, AP courses are offered uh, with the VLN option. Okay, so that's a very, uh, very good question. Okay, if they choose live, how will they do their electives such as cooking or pottery? So uh, um, I do think I may have addressed this, but I'll, I'll go ahead again. Um, if they choose the live option, I know that Mrs. Vendor and Mrs. Vulo would probably be coming up with alternative creative activities that the students can do that are similar to what they're doing in class, but may take on a different format. It might be a video that they're watching, some journal writing, some cooking or baking at home that involves taking pictures and video. Um, as far as pottery goes, I know that Mrs. Higgins last year, even when we shut down schools, Mrs. Higgins was able to provide clay to students to work on their pottery um, at home. So, you know, those are things that we can arrange drop-offs and pickups for, and that's something we became very proficient at um, in, the, in the spring of last year. So, um, you know, now Mrs. Higgins may have to adjust some of her activities, and so maybe the student has to do some research about the art history of pottery, or famous potters um, and some of their styles. So there may be some alternate activities involved that don't match exactly with the activity going on in the classroom at that time. Okay, how will band be handled? Um, so far, we are planning to go forward with band. I know that our school board has approved a band plan, just like they approved an athletics reopening plan. Um, and Mrs. Robson has reached out to students. So we are planning to move forward with band. I know that Mrs. Robson um, has looked into, for instance, um, percussion students would be able to wear masks. Obviously instruments that are played with the mouth, uh, you would not be able to. And Mrs. Robson knows that we have to increase the social distancing uh, due to the forceful expulsion of air through the instrument. But I know that Mrs. Robson has, is also researching um, you know, band covers or basically masks for instruments. Okay, so we, we are looking at um, continuing band, okay? Uh, I think that answers the next question, although the next question also has to do with chorus. Um, we are planning on moving forward with chorus. Um, we are planning, again, to try to increase the social distancing uh, due to the singing uh, with students. Um, we are obviously gonna have to move to a venue that is larger than our chorus room. Um, we may have to do some uh, types of chorus activities that involve breaking the chorus um, into smaller groups uh, to be able to handle, uh, to be able to handle, let's say the volume of students. Um, but we are looking at trying to have outdoor um, opportunities when the weather is nice and we are looking at moving chorus to larger venues, okay? Um, we have a question, what happens if a student refuses to wear a mask? Um, I believe when I handled bus transportation, I did address that question. Uh, if you joined us late, I'll briefly recap that. Um, folks, the last thing that you 
as a parent or your student or Mr. Kretschmer or I uh, want to have to go through is any type of disagreeable or uncomfortable or confrontational situation, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, the whole purpose of having this meeting is really so that you know, we can let folks know exactly what the expectations are within the different options that students can choose. So within option number one, which is a return to school, as I've mentioned, we are absolutely expecting full compliance with our face covering mandate that the state of Pennsylvania has in place, okay? As I mentioned before, if a student or a parent uh, significantly disagrees with that, the last thing we want to do is avoid having a bus driver have to radio into the school to let us know that there's an issue on a bus. It, it's really not fair to the students um, who you know, are willing to comply with the mandate um, on the bus or all the other students here. So if a student refuses to wear a mask, I would encourage you to please choose option number two or three, okay? Um, what's going to happen to the Honesdale Performing Arts Program? Um, I believe uh, I answered this question also on a, on a previous uh, question about the Honesdale High School Musical. Um, I know at this time, um, you know, the Honesdale Performing Arts Program, uh, you know, I, I can't say either way about a Honesdale High School Musical occurring in the spring. This is a very fluid situation, um, and I am hopeful that things will improve by then. Um, so, you know, I, I, I do hope that, that we can pull that off but I, I really can't speak at this point. I think a question like that would best be directed uh, to Mr. Miller. And again, I don't wanna put more on his shoulders, but I know that he'll be able to speak uh, very articulately uh, regarding the Honzel Performing Arts Program, okay? Um, if AP courses are offered with the second option, what happens with labs? Okay, so that is a, that's a very good question as well. Um, the students, the student and the teacher would need to try to work out uh, those lab options um, as much as possible. Uh, and what I mean by that is um, on the AP website, um, I know that there's a wealth of information and resources um, and that students may have access to labs that are being demonstrated. Um, the student could possibly log in live. Let's say it's AP biology, okay? So the student logs in live, Mrs. Cromco is recording, um, or Mrs. Cromco rec pre-records a lab, and she's able to talk the student through the different elements of the lab. Um, so th that's the direction that I think we'd be going in is uh, some type of virtual labs, online labs, or the student participating um, virtually through the live option, okay? Are there other classes offered with VLN than just what is available at Honesdale? So uh, that is a good question. Um, yes, the VLN catalog does have classes like, uh, I believe it has Chinese. Uh, I believe it has German, okay? However, in the agreement that we have uh, with the Wayne Highlands Educational Association, um, we are offering courses through option number three, which is the Wayne Highlands Virtual Campus, okay? Which is through VLN, um, you know, the, the third party vendor that we use, we are only offering courses that would have uh, comparable mates here at Honesdale High School, okay? Um, another question, how are you handling food allergies? So we still hope and plan, actually I shouldn't use the word hope, we plan to handle food allergies um, exactly the same as we have in the past. Um, in our cafeteria or in a dining area, whether it's the auditorium uh, or whether it is uh, one of the hallways outside the kitchen or the auditorium, we absolutely can designate a, a food allergy table. If there are classrooms where a student has a severe food allergy, um, then throughout the school day, we would be able to designate those, school, those rooms as um, uh, food allergy rooms um, so that students are aware of that. Um, I know on school buses, our school bus drivers I have been very cooperative and compliant with, with food allergy regulations. And I know that on our school buses, because of this pandemic, food and drink won't be allowed on those school buses anyway, okay? Uh, I also know that our school nurse 
um, will be is trained um, to handle food allergy uh, reactions. Um, and I, I know that some high school students, you know, have permission to carry, let's say, an EpiPen uh, with them. So I fully plan to handle food allergies exactly as we have in the past. Okay. Is there a parent drop off time frame allowed? So the parent drop off time frame is exactly the same as we've used over the years. Um, here at Honesdale High School, we will have um, early morning staffing available just as we have in the past, okay? Um, another question, is the senior project due this year for seniors um, as job shadowing may be difficult? Um, so that's a very good question. Um, job shadowing is one option that students can choose to help them complete uh, their graduation project, which is typically referred to as a senior project, okay? Because there are other options, we, we would absolutely encourage students to try to use other options to complete their graduation project. Uh, we, don't, we do know that some job shadowing may be able to be done virtually, so we would encourage students to do that as well. Um, we also know that depending upon the job, job shadowing that is permitted by, between a student and uh, a business, you know, if, if a business is allowing that, then we absolutely would encourage the student to move forward with that job shadowing. Okay, would it be a good idea for everyone attending in person school to get a COVID negative test before attending school? Many are positive and are asymptomatic uh, and don't know that they are positive. Um, so that is a good question. Um, and I would leave that to um, each individual parent and student and their primary care physician. Um, if a student feels compelled to um, have a COVID test uh, before you attend school, uh, you're more than welcome to. However, at this time in our Wayne Highland School District Health and Safety Reopening Plan, that is not a required stipulation for students to be able to um, attend school in person here at Honesdale High School. Um, a question about how senior projects will be handled. Um, you know, senior projects I know some students have signed up for career prep class and we fully anticipate that our career prep classes will continue on either in an in-person format or through the live format as well. Students who've signed up for career prep should easily be able to complete their career, excuse me, their graduation project just simply by fulfilling all the requirements of that class. The student would then be required to present to their mentor. And I know that students, even if they choose a virtual option, students would be able to present their graduation project to their mentor via some type of a, a, a Zoom meeting. And uh, that would fulfill that, that uh, requirement, okay? Um, what if we decide to do in school two or three days a week and online the rest of the week, can we? Um, I, I did answer that question earlier. Um, it's a full five-day commitment to in-person learning, or it's a full five-day commitment to um, online live um, learning, okay? Uh, what if students pass out due to the mask? Um, so one thing that I mentioned earlier tonight, um, I would have the student please uh, begin to explore wearing a mask um, and please try to increase the time that the student wears the mask. Um, and if, if the student exhibits symptoms where they cannot wear a mask in school, um, obviously that would have to be um, something you would very significantly have to take into consideration um, in order to make your educational declaration, okay? Um, if a student passes out, we would handle the situation exactly the same as we would if this was a not a, a non-COVID-19 global pandemic, okay? We would immediately call the nurse, you know, we would elevate legs, um, you know, we would take, we would move into all the medical response protocols that we would typically follow, okay? Will there be an adjustment to dress code allowing shorts in order to avoid overheating with no AC and mask wearing all day? So I did answer this question earlier tonight. Um, at this point, my response was that Mr. Kretschmer and I will, will discuss this. Um, the majority of the school year um, here in Northeastern Pennsylvania, um, temperatures are not overly 
hot in the high school. I don't disagree with you folks that sometimes in the first couple weeks of school, um, it can be a little balmy. And sometimes in the last few weeks of school, it can be a little bit balmy. I, I completely understand where you're coming from. So Mr. Kretschmer and I will take that question under consideration uh, and we will absolutely make sure that we communicate that out very clearly uh, to all of our high school students, okay, and parents. So again, thank you for that. Um, it was stated that students need to wear a mask unless social distancing can be obtained. So does that mean if students are six feet apart, they do not need to wear a mask? So that is a good question. Um, if students are going to be able to be six feet apart for an extended period of time with an avoidance of anyone entering their zone or their area for you know, an extended period of time, yes, the student would be permitted to remove the mask if they choose, okay? However, as soon as the nature of the activity were to change so that that six foot could become compromised, then the students would have to return to wearing their mask. We do expect the students to comply with the teacher directives uh, regarding mask wearing, okay? Um, with option number two, will students receive an iPad? With option, this is a very good question. With option number two, which is the live version with Honesdale High School teachers getting the same exact curriculum as their, 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 um, their counterparts, um, at least the curriculum as much as absolutely manageable, okay? Um, the students will be expected to be trying to use their own device um, and their own internet connection, okay? If a student um, does not have access to any device, a laptop, um, a tablet, um, uh, an iPad, if a, a, a personal um, desktop computer, if the student does not at all have access to a device, um, Wayne Highland School District will be looking to help that family out with a device for that, okay? All right, will we be allowed to use Honesdale High School Fitness Center or weight room after school? Um, so that is a very good question. Um, right now, according to um, our health and safety protocol, uh, the weight room is being used right now for off-season workouts. Okay, and there is a very stringent protocol uh, regarding the cleaning of that uh, fitness center and weight room um, as far, and, and there's also a very stringent protocol regarding masking um, as, and social distancing. So while I can't promise that it would be available to every student after school, um, I would say that at this point, we would look to continue use of the fitness center and weight room. However, I would also have to say first dibs would be given to um, students who are in season, okay? And then next dibs would be given to students who are out of season for a sport. And to be very honest and upfront and frank with you, I don't quite know then if we'd be able to support the volume for students who want to voluntarily use our fitness center or weight room. So I hope I've answered that to the best of, uh, of, of, of your, to the best of my ability, I hope it's answered your question. Um, if we get another surge of COVID and school is again homebound, can students transition to virtual learning versus Google Classroom? Is this a smooth transition? So um, I'll do my very best with this question. I'm assuming what you mean by that is if school is shut down, let's say. Okay, so if school is shut down, then um, I already know that we will make the transition, especially if school is shut down for an extended period of time. We will absolutely transition all students to um, the Wayne Highland School District live version, okay? We will transition all students to that, okay? And that should be a smooth transition because um, really they're just going to move from the in-person classroom to an online environment but they're gonna keep the same exact teachers and the same exact schedule, the same exact content, okay? If a student is enrolled in the live program, how would they obtain their uh, textbooks uh, or iPads? Um, excuse me, um, I, 
I apologize that I, miss, I misspoke a little bit earlier. Um, and I'll correct myself here in a moment. If a student is enrolled in a live program, they would obtain their textbooks through a drop-off um, system that we implemented last fall where students come to the back of the high school, where the girls' locker room is, right by the gym. Um, you know, they're masked, the teacher is masked. Um, we drop off all of their uh, textbooks and iPad um, in, the, in a bag, um, safely in, like, say, the passenger seat or the back of their, of their vehicle. Um, also, I misspoke. If a student chooses the live option, um, high school students do have iPads. So if the student is a high school student and they choose the live option, yes, they do have an iPad and that iPad would um, absolutely be used because all high school students will receive iPads, okay? So I, I apologize that my answer wasn't 100% on point there. Will all students be issued an iPad regardless of which option that is chosen? And again, I just corrected myself. Option one and option two, they will receive an iPad. Option three, the Wayne Highlands Virtual Campus, uh, they do not receive an iPad. Um, however, through our liaison, Mr. Roos, um, the Wayne Highlands Virtual Campus um, is able to provide the supplies, uh, the hardware and software that's necessary uh, for that option, okay? In option two, will students be able to join extracurriculars and will, be, will there be an effort to include students remotely, um, clubs, et cetera? So that is a very good question. Uh, and I'm glad that it was asked. Some extracurriculars that we do have, like for instance, I'll use mock trial as an example. I think mock trial is an extracurricular that may be able to be handled fairly seamlessly through students contacting the advisor live as well as students being in person for that extracurricular activity. So I do, I do think that, that that is a possibility for some of our extracurricular activities, okay? Uh, will there be someone checking backpacks? Maybe consider using clear backpacks. So that is, a, that is a very good question. And in this age of school safety and security, you know, that is something that our district has considered. Um, at this point, Honesdale High School has operated under a system where students bring backpacks of all makes and models into the school building unchecked during the school day. Now, they typically put those items in their locker, okay? So at this time, um, at this time, we are planning on moving forward in that manner, okay? Because Honesdale High School students have, have demonstrated um, that, that that is a procedure that can be uh, followed here at our school um, safely. We also know that really the best way to determine safety is to maintain those connections with students and getting our eyes on students, talking to students, listening to students. That's typically the best way to find out if there's things that are troubling them. And then our guidance counselors can kick into action. Uh, Mr. Strokia um, can also kick into action here. Uh, Mrs. Sapella can kick into action. So at this point, we are not planning to check backpacks or to use clear backpacks. At this point, we're not, um, but, I, but I thank you for that question. Is there any plan for parents to attend any of the extracurricular events that their child may be participating in? So I guess I'm interpreting that question to mean, for instance, like, Science Olympiad is conducting a competition. Um, folks, I'm not exactly sure um, that different extracurricular activities will actually be hosting competitions, okay? Uh, and I apologize. Uh, I feel that it's just too early to be able to answer those questions. Um, if you're talking about something like a football game and marching band, um, you know, I know that band is an intrinsic part of our football season. Assuming that our football season were to move forward, right now we are operating under um, a situation, I believe to the best of my knowledge, where about 250 people would be permitted um, at a football game, let's say. Okay, Mrs. Scarfalato, our athletic director and I have sat down 
We've counted up the number of young men who are on the football team. We've counted up the number of staff members or coaches who are part of the football team. We've counted up our typical number of cheerleaders and advisors, counted up our marching band and their advisors as well, okay? We also have to account for the other school's football team and the other school's, let's say, cheerleaders. When Mrs. Scarfalato and I did the math, that's pretty close to 250. So at this point, um, I cannot answer the question definitively, but I can tell you that we are leaning toward not allowing parents to attend simply because based on the, the cap of the number of individuals that we permitted, we just don't have any additional room. However, there has been talk, and again, I'm cautioning you, it's, it, it's, it's in its infancy stages about potentially live streaming some event like a football game or being able to see that marching band. Okay, so I hope I've done the best that I could to answer that question via like an example of marching band and an example of, um, you know, like Science Olympiad. Um, I just don't know that there'll be competitions that parents will be able to attend. Okay, another question, will students have to wear a mask during gym class? So when students are physically exerting themselves heavily, uh, they will not be required to wear a mask. However, um, students will need to make sure that they're maintained at a distance of six feet apart, okay? If the students have to dress for phys ed, would they be able to wear sweat or athletic clothes? So that's a good question that Mr. Kretschmer and I are definitely going to consider moving forward. And we'll be very happy to communicate that to our students and parents uh, when we do uh, reach uh, some type of a conclusion about that issue. Okay, so that, that's a very good question because I know that I referenced an elementary style type of PE situation and PE stu elementary students, while they're not held to the same dress code that Honesdale High School students are typically held to, I do know that you know, a lot of them will wear shorts or sweatpants on uh, gym day. So it's something that Mr. Kretschmer and I can consider, okay? If there is a shutdown in school, will all students move to option two in order to maintain continuity of education? Um, I did answer that question already, um, and I, the answer was yes. Okay, when you said students should dress for PE, does that mean they can now wear sweatpants to school since it would be hot and difficult for kids? Again, I, I believe I just answered that, um, and Mr. Kretschmer and I will take that under advisement and come up with a decision. Okay, next question. How will live students get the credit for gym class? So that's a very good question. Um, folks, um, as much as I've emphasized that students will log in live for classes, okay? Uh, Mr. West and I have already, Mr. West is the department chair for the high school uh, health and phys ed department. Um, actually district wide, he's the uh, phys ed department chair. Um, Mr. West and I know that there will be some gym classes where students, it would make sense for students to log in live. Um, in other words, let's say there's an archery unit, okay? Well, it would make sense for a student to log in live for the archery unit while Mrs. Pichotti presents all the different aspects of knocking the arrow, um, holding the bow, uh, the parts of the bow, um, the position of the arms, um, the position of the arms, okay? Um, I do know that the student would benefit from that presentation. Now, Mr. West and I have also discussed, a student might have a packet that's sent to them via Google Classroom. And instead of the student actually drawing the bow and shooting the arrow, well, the student might answer some questions through the Google um, online format. Uh, and the student might answer questions about <clears throat> about how to shoot the arrow and things of that nature. The phys ed department is also considering um, some more traditional health related phys ed type of lessons where it would also again make sense for the student to log in, go through the presentation about target heart rate, um, blood pressure and things of that nature. And then maybe the student participates in their own physical activity um, for the remainder of the class. I know the phys ed department is also contemplating a situation where a student might not log in live, but the student might be allowed to do an activity from an approved list of activities 
and they may have to journal that or, or, or show that. So there are different ways if you choose the live version to get credit for gym class, okay? In number three, can they come to school in the second quarter? <clears throat> can they like one and two? Um, so in number three, if they can come to school in the second quarter, so the answer is yes. If you choose option number three for the first quarter, yes, you can choose option one or two for the second quarter. Again, folks, I would caution you, if you choose option number three, it's the Wayne Highlands Virtual Campus. Um, it is not as seamless a transition um, because it's provided by a third party vendor uh, with a quality curriculum, but it doesn't line up in lockstep with exactly what your Honesdale High School teacher did on the last day of the first marking period, okay? What is the school's plan? If there are students that have confirmed COVID cases, will the school close and go to the live version of teaching? Uh, as I've mentioned before, um, our student, excuse me, we will contact our superintendent. We will then contact our medical professionals in our community. We will follow the procedures and protocols that they would recommend. Could that ultimately end up that school closes? It could be a possibility. Uh, there could be other possibilities that are less invasive uh, or less broad sweeping, okay? Since tools in both the wood shop and power tech will be shared from class to class, will the school be providing students with disposable gloves to wear during those classes? Uh, yes, that is an option that students will be uh, receiving disposable gloves. Um, it's also an option that tools will be wiped down. It's also an option that some students uh, may have, we may have enough tools to designate for individual students. Um, so there are a variety of options between gloves, disinfecting, and then designating non-shareable equipment um, for students. Uh, please keep in mind that elementary students are allowed to wear shorts. Uh, so I, I have addressed that uh, multiple times. Thank you definitely for that comment. Do students have the option to change from option one to option two during the different marking periods? Again, folks, we're looking for full commitments for an entire marking period, unless there's an extenuating circumstance. Um, if you choose option two live, can a student come to school for certain classes like photography? So to answer, I believe I've answered that question um, a little bit earlier tonight. Um, if a student um, does come to school, we are expecting a five-day commitment um, to the, the in-person physical attendance in the building or a five-day-a-week commitment to the live option. Um, and so we are not looking to split classes um, here and there throughout the school day. <clears throat> okay, how will resident building and metal tech classes uh, be handled? Um, those classes if students obviously come to the in-person uh, format, um, those, there will be absolutely no interruption whatsoever. And if students decide that they wanna remain in a, a residential building class and they wanna proceed to the live version, um, then they would work with Mr. Rickard uh, or they would work through their metal tech teacher um, in order to come up with activities uh, that would be uh, as similar as possible to what they're trying to accomplish in class, okay? Okay, uh, the next question that I'll address. Okay, so folks, um, there, there are a, a series of questions here regarding shorts and dress code. So I, I, I know that I have 74 new messages. Um, I know that it's 938. I will absolutely stay to the very end and I will absolutely answer every question. Um, and these questions will be recorded, uh, but it does seem, and I apologize folks, it does seem like there's a number of people asking questions that have been asked before. Um, and I don't mean any offense by that whatsoever, but I am going to, I am gonna start skipping questions uh, that have been redundant. And I am gonna ask people to just tune into the recorded version because if they listen to the recorded version, they will hear those answers. Um, definitely more than once, okay? How are you managing student athletes leaving for away games, if there will be any, as far as changing into their uniforms 
if locker rooms are not open? Okay, so that's a very good question, actually. Um, we know that what we're going to do is if a team is leaving for an away match, they need to change then the coach is going to work on a staggered use of the locker room for students to change and then staggered boarding of the bus, okay? If one option is chosen for the first and the student isn't comfortable, can they switch to a different option for the next marking period? Yes. If parents are supposed to take temps, what is the average temp we should look for so we know whether or not to send them to school? Excellent question. 100% point four is the temperature at which students should wait for 15 minutes be retested and if it remains at 100.4 or higher you should you should keep your child home okay is there an identified percent of the school population that would trigger a school closing no there is not can a student wear a face shield instead of a mask it seems to work very well in other countries Great question. If you read the Pennsylvania Department of Health face covering or face masking mandate, it does clearly state that a face covering such as a mask over the mouth and nose is preferred, but it also clearly states that a face shield that covers the mouth and nose is considered acceptable and meets the letter and the spirit of that mandate. Are there any recommendations or suggestions for the type of mask the students wear daily? The health, has the health department suggested that what mask would be most tolerable or best for long-term wear? So that is a good question. I have not seen, I have not seen necessarily any recommendations. What I can say is that there are recommendations, you know, about which ones are approved for medical use and which ones are not approved for medical use. And I know the N95s are approved for medical use. Beyond that, I would recommend that you as a parent would take a look at research online. And I would ask that you would try to find the mask that's the most comfortable for your student that still meets the face covering or the face masking mandate. Okay, will activity buses still be available? At this point, I have not heard that we will be uh, prohibiting the use of activity buses, okay? So uh, I will tentatively answer yes to that question, okay? I'm currently enrolled into organic chemistry. How would labs be done virtually as they require burners, beakers, chemicals, et cetera? And you are correct. That is something you would have to consider in making your decision. Uh, if you feel strongly enough that you would need to choose the live option, um, I know that you would work with Mrs. Tonkin um, to um, somehow, as I mentioned before with the AP Bio Labs, you could join the lab virtually where you could watch everything that's going on. You could interact with the teacher and the other students um, so that they could transmit to you observations that are qualitative and quantitative, okay? And then you could do the organic chemistry lab report based on, you know, working in unison with, you, you know, your lab partners, so to speak. Okay, Mrs. Tonkin might also have suggestions about virtual organic labs that are able to be completed. Okay, how will option number three be graded differently from one and two? So that's a very good question. In option number three, you would be graded by the teachers in the VLN network. Okay, and they will very clearly communicate to you their grading scale um, as well as their um, expectations, um, as well as their grading rubrics and grading requirements, okay? And that would be different than how, let's say, <clears throat> that could be different than how Mr. Jerkowski would say to you, okay, here's how I'm grading you for anatomy and physiology. Um, the percent will be based on tests, a certain percent on quizzes, a percent on homework, a percent on labs, etc. Okay, so no matter who you have, your teachers will clearly communicate their grading expectations. How will tests be taken the live version? Um, again, I have addressed this earlier. Uh, so with all due respect, I, I will skip it and ask the person to reference the recorded version if you didn't hear it. Um, hey, what, what about this? I gotta thank you, you did a wonderful job. Hey, whoever that was, please tell my wife. 
Okay, just trying to interject a little humor. I'm sweating like, uh, you know, sweating like a sinner in church here. I'm sorry. Okay, will all classes be available every day in both the live and the recorded version? So that's a really good question. Um, yes, our teachers do know that they have to allow students to log in live that exact day. Okay, now, folks, I'm not going to guarantee or promise that a teacher who's going to provide a recorded version might provide that recorded version, let's say one day ahead or maybe one day after, okay? But the recorded version is going to be chronologically exceptionally close, if not the exact same day uh, as the live version, okay? Okay, another question, would Wood Tech be live or will you have to drop the class? Um, again, um, that is up, that, again, that's a, that's a personal decision the parent and student will have to make. Wood Tech will clearly be live for the students who are in person, physically in the building. Um, and if you decide to stay in Wood Tech and you're going to choose the live option, okay, then you would have to work with Mr. Rickard um, to try to accomplish some of the different tasks. Um, and I, and I, would, I would recommend uh, emailing Mr. Rickard uh, to find out you know, his thoughts and ideas about that, okay? Senior class trip, will fundraisers still occur? Um, yes, we are still going to try to move forward. I believe our senior class advisors um, are still moving forward um, with the senior class fundraisers. Um, I believe they're also still moving. I know I know that they are moving forward with planning for the senior class trip in hopes that the situation will uh, be much better uh, in the springtime. Okay, will the district ever consider a hybrid option that allows high school students to enter the building for hands-on electives while still maintaining their core courses through live? Um, and I do understand the person's re uh, response about limiting exposure for various reasons. Um, Again, thank you for the question. Thank you for the comment. At this time, we're not, but it is something now that has come up repeatedly, and it is something that I can continue to talk about with our administrative team. Okay, can my senior leave after their classes uh, no matter what time? Um, I, I'm, I'm not exactly sure about that question. W what I'm assuming, if I'm interpreting the question correctly, is that if your student has senior early dismissal, they have chosen to be in person physically in the building, then yes, when their senior, senior early dismissal kicks in, yes, they would be permitted uh, to leave the building. Um, I would hope that your student wouldn't just say, well, I don't feel like going to English today, so I'm gonna leave. That unfortunately would not be an option. Uh, there is a good possibility that the school nurses will be overwhelmed quickly, particularly during the first weeks of school. Is there a plan in place to call in additional staff to help the nurses uh, expedite student care. Uh, so that is a good question. And I will be happy to bring that again to our administrative team um, re regarding, regarding a backup plan for that. I'll tell you what, our school nurses have been fantastic. Um, you know, I, I know that sounds like I'm, you know, just towing the company line, but I'll tell you what, they've contributed significantly uh, to our health plan uh, and they have done a fantastic job. So I appreciate the concern for our nurses. I appreciate the concern for our students' well-being. Um, and and it, that is something that, that we can definitely look into. Okay. Um, next question. Will the live still be available on snow days for all students so that we don't miss any days? So that is a good question. At this time, um, it's my understanding that if we have a snow day, it would be considered a snow day district-wide for all students. And then the next day would become the next consecutive day of school. Um, you know, however, um, it is something that our administrative team may be able to consider. But at this time, we are just looking at snow days for everyone in the district. Will there be designated tables for seniors at lunch like previous years? Will students be able to choose who they sit by um, or will it be assigned? Okay, so that's a good question. Um, at this point, I would intend on leaving tables that are in the back of the cafeteria reserved for seniors. And now I do understand that senior privilege question a little bit more. That is one of the questions uh, that we typically, excuse me, that is one of the privileges seniors usually enjoy. 
As I'm sure you can understand, we will not be using those round tables uh, in the back of the cafeteria. If we do use the round tables in the back of the cafeteria, we have to avoid across the table seating. We also have to avoid anything less than six foot social distancing, okay? To answer the second part of your question, um, to answer the second part of your question, um, we, are, um, we are planning at this time to allow students to, to move to areas uh, that of their choosing, okay? We do have to be cognizant though that students have to fill from back to front, okay? Um, and students will be six feet apart, okay? Uh, let's see. The next question is about um, live and extracurricular activities. Um, it's less exposure if you come to school, but if you still participate in phys ed, excuse me, in extracurricular activities, uh, you do get some physical activity. So thank you for that point. As I've mentioned, um, you are permitted to be in the live option and participate to, in extracurriculars to the extent that our extracurriculars are running. Okay. Uh, if I choose option two for my child, will he need to pick up his iPad? I mentioned that it will already be a, a drop off type of scenario that you would pick up. Okay. Um, will report card state what educational option the student was enrolled in? No. How will grades, uh, how will grades appear to colleges? College grades uh, will appear on your final transcript and it will include your final grade in the course for the year, okay? So I hope that answers that question. Um, if a student chooses option number three, will they still be able to participate in the Honesdale High School Band? Uh, the answer to that question is no. Um, VLN does not have um, a band option. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, there are some Honesdale High School classes that simply are not offered through VLN uh, which is the Wayne Helens virtual campus. Um, the student who chooses option one or two would be able to participate in band. Uh, what are the protocols from high school regarding band and chorus different from that of the middle school? Um, basically um, here at the high school, uh, and I don't know the middle school's unique situation, uh, but I do know that our band plan was approved by our school board um, I do know that Mrs. Robson um, is looking into or, or has already looked into all the protocols that she would follow that are very similar to our athletic plan. She's also looked for um, covers for instruments, which she plans to implement. Um, and uh, we will be able to increase social distancing with those students even more so um, than the six feet. Okay. Um, so I don't want to appear as if I'm in conflict to Dr. Jordan. Um, again, folks, this might be something that I have to revisit, but um, as far as I know at the high school, we are planning to move forward. And as I've mentioned with Chorus, uh, we are planning to socially distance those students even more and move into much larger um, areas or cut down the size of Chorus for particular sessions, okay? According to Governor Wolf, you're allowed 250 people at an outdoor event. Why can't there be spectators at the soccer games? Uh, so again, uh, that is a very good question. Um, I will be attending uh, Lackawanna Interscholastic Athletic Association meeting tomorrow, uh, where we will continue to talk more about athletics. Um, and in the case of certain sports, we may be able to allow spectators if social distancing guidelines can be maintained. Um, so that is a question that I can take uh, under advisement, okay? Thank you. Just making a few notes here. Um, what would happen with the drills? Uh, I'm assuming that uh, this individual is referring to like weather emergency drills, uh, fire drills, um, lockdown drills, uh, things of that nature. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're still gonna try to conduct those drills and we're gonna conduct those drills in a manner in which students are masked in a manner which we try to maintain social distancing absolutely as much as possible uh, with those students. And we are gonna just try to make sure to get students into 
the habit of how to respond to those drills should one occur, okay? I know COVID-19 you know, represents a health concern. I also know that some type of an emergency here at the school also represents a concern. And so we do have to be prepared for, for both things, okay? Uh, before COVID-11, before COVID, 11th graders required a physical before returning to school. Is that still a requirement before the opening of school? So I know that Mrs. Rickard, our school nurse, has sent letters out to parents um, in our high school regarding immunizations um, and physicals uh, and things of that nature. I know that incoming 12th graders um, are required to have a second uh, Menactra uh, vaccination if they haven't had one already. Um, and I know that there's some variations of that that are also permissible. Um, so um, I just wanted to mention that. Um, however, um, along with that letter that Mrs. Rickard sent out, there is also um, an extension that was granted um, as, far as, uh, as far as required school health procedures are concerned. Um, so if you could please check with Mrs. Rickard, just email her, please. I know that she'll be able to very specifically answer that question. Okay, since we have to wear a face mask and we can't see our facial, I'm assuming the student meant facial hair. Do we have to shave? Um, nice try, uh, but yes, uh, we would still be expecting our Honesville High School students uh, to maintain that standard, okay? Uh, if I choose option two, will free lunch students still be able to get breakfast and lunch? Um, that is a very good question that I will have to check with Mr. Spaulding um, to get the answer to that question, okay? I, I know that right now during the summertime, uh, we are providing lunches and breakfasts um, to students. And I know that when we close down in the spring, we were also providing those lunches and breakfasts, uh, but that's an excellent question. And I apologize that I was unprepared to answer that. Can a student wear a face shield instead of a mask? Yes. Do you think it's possible that sophomores may get, uh, get to go to Washington DC next year since it's uh, unlikely that they, or since it's likely they won't be able to go next year? Um, again, that's a, that's a, a question um, that we can definitely look into. Um, I know that you know, I would need to talk to Mrs. Uh, uh, Mrs. Vosberg, our social studies department chair about that, okay? I know that I would be open to that idea. Uh, I don't wanna uh, put Mrs. Vosberg in a, in a tricky situation, uh, but it is a reasonable suggestion. We would obviously have to look at logistics. Okay, when do we, our schedules, um, our schedules, uh, our schedules, we're hoping to make those available to students in late August, and we're hoping that students will review their schedules, and we're hoping to make any final changes in student schedules before school starts on September 8th, okay? Um, we are handing out iPads to students in option two because they are Honesdale High School students and Honesdale High School students are issued iPads. Um, another parent asked about soccer and cross country. Uh, cross country, uh, sometimes for some of our meets, um, they can be very crowded. Um, so again, uh, these are, these are things that we can take a look at. And again, folks, there may be a blanket statement um, so as to not to discriminate against certain sports. There may be a blanket statement, in which case we would try to look at live streaming athletic events, okay? Uh, with kids switching rooms, will desks be cleaned or disinfected in between? Cleaning products will be available so that desks can be disinfected between classes. Another parent asked about soccer games. I'm gonna skip that one because I already answered it. Um, if a student is injured on crutches, how would that student get help with books, et cetera? Um, so we would implement what we've done in the past. We would implement a student to try to help another student with crutches uh, to get around the building. Uh, students would main be masked. Um, remember, students will be able to use book bags. And for students on crutches, we have permitted them to use their book bags uh, in the past regardless of the COVID-19 situation, okay? Can students still make changes to their schedule? They should contact their guidance counselor immediately if that's something that you're looking at. We would very much like to have all schedule changes done by 
uh, Friday, excuse me, by September 4th, which I believe is a Thursday. Um, maybe it's the 3rd uh, of September. Yes, we'd, we'd like to have it, um, we'd like to have that completed. Okay, so there's another good question about CPR certification, uh, which occurs in our 11th grade. Um, so again, I can look into that with Mrs. Pichotti, um, as well as our, and Mr. Luchansky, as well as our other phys ed teachers. So I did write that question down to see if we will be able to do CPR certifications, okay? Um, the next question about switching just for one day, I've already answered. Uh, why did you skip question about contact tracing your early remarks about the school contacting families cannot contradicted what Mr. Jagger told us last night. He told us school staff are not legally, legally allowed to do contact tracing. Uh, so again, folks, I, I don't wanna create a situation where um, something that I've said may seem like it's in direct um, conflict with Mr. Jagger. Um, I apologize if I s skipped a question. Okay, um, folks, we're gonna follow the protocols that we are authorized to do um, by medical professionals. So earlier tonight, if I'm not mistaken, I said that we may notify through a letter a student or a family or a group of students that they may have been in a classroom uh, where a student tested positive for COVID. I'm not relaying any specific confidential information that's breaking HIPAA, plus a medical professional might guide us and say, no Wayne Highland School District, you do not need to send a letter. However, contact tracing will occur through the Pennsylvania Department of Health. So folks, I, I hope I didn't give any definitive um, answer, but I, I thought I said that some of these things may occur, such as the school may contact a family without divulging private information or breaking HIPAA, medical professionals may contact a family, contact tracing uh, individuals may contact the parents, okay? So I, I hope that clarifies things and I apologize if there's any uh, misunderstanding. How will option three be reflected in a student's GPA? Their GPA will cal calculate based on the grades that they've received through the Wayne Hines virtual campus. Are we still going to have three lunch blocks? Yes. Um, I got another thank you. I appreciate that. I'll continue. What safety precautions uh, are being taken to also protect our teachers? Uh, that's a great question. So teachers are afforded the same opportunities to use uh, personal protective equipment that they would like. So uh, I know some teachers have talked about masks and face shields. Some teachers have talked about face shields. Some teachers have talked about um, wearing gloves wearing clothing that they then keep at school. Um, I know that um, we, are, we have placed plexiglass dividers um, in some high traffic areas. Um, so we are trying to provide our teachers um, all the opportunities to protect themselves uh, as well. So thank you very much. Um, our 1920 transcripts to see our class rank. Um, <clears throat> um, as soon as our portal opens up, um, which I believe our portal may be closed at this time while we're still working on scheduling, uh, because I know we're balancing classes right now so we can maximize social distancing. Um, I think students will be able to see their transcripts at that time. Uh, also, you can email your guidance counselor and your guidance counselor can send you your transcript, uh, at least an unofficial copy. Okay, uh, will every Honesdale High School teacher be participating in the uh, live option? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, uh, yes, they will. Now, obviously, um, there, there may be teachers, let me just use phys ed as an example, okay? Uh, there may be a day when um, Mr., let's say, uh, Mr. Luchansky allows the students who are in the live option to choose from a list of pre-approved um, activities. And folks, please, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to box my phys ed teachers into a particular option. I, I'm strictly saying, you know, this, this might be a hypothetical. 
So if Mr. Luchansky and the phys ed department says, okay, here's a list of approved activities. And today, you know, your student can choose from that activity. Okay, well, if your student is gonna do weightlifting in their garage and the phys ed teacher expects like a log that indicates five exercises that they did, then obviously that student wouldn't have to log in live that particular day. So I'm gonna say yes, 99% of the time, all high school teachers will be participating in some type of a live option, okay? Uh, but there could be exceptions to that where maybe Mrs. Tonkin says, hey, there's no need to log in live today. I want you to do this organic chemistry lab and it's a virtual lab that I want you to do online. Um, and maybe that's the alternate activity, okay? So, um, you know, by and large, our teachers should be in that live option. Okay. Um, I, I thank you again for a thank you that I got from another parent. Um, I got an amen. I appreciate that. Uh, I've got a thank you. Uh, okay, wow. Lots, lots, of, lots of thank yous. Um, here's a good question. When there is a substitute teacher, will a live class still be held in the same manner or would it look different? That is an outstanding question. Okay, so um, I don't know, let's say Mrs. Lessig, uh, who is one of our English two teachers, that's American literature, and it's a keystone preparation type of a class. Okay, if Mrs. Lessig is absent, Mrs. Lessig, we will try to secure a substitute teacher for Mrs. Lessig to physically come into the building to be able to work with the students who are in the building physically, okay? Because Mrs. Lessig would assumedly be at home that day or at a training and she would have her laptop with her, um, we would not be able to provide a live option. However, if it's something that Mrs. Lessig is aware of her absence, she's going to be at a training, she may be very easily able to provide a live student with Google Classroom pre-recorded material to work on and view for that day, okay? Um, if it's an unexpected illness and Mrs. Lessig is out, then what would happen is quite often, even in those cases, Mrs. Lessig or one of her colleagues is able to provide material through Google Classroom uh, to the student in order to be able to do that. So I hope that that, um, I, I hope that, that answers your question about a substitute teacher, but no, we, do, we will not be expecting the substitute teacher to conduct a live session uh, that day. Okay, um, how does the situation affect the health occupations program? So that is a very good question. Um, I do know that right now, Mrs. Park um, has been in contact with the hospital and the sites that our students would typically go to for the hospital so far are in agreement that they would be able to host students um, live at the hospital in person, okay? Now, I did write that down as a question. Um, if a student is going through the health occupations class with um, Mrs. Park, um, again, Mrs. Park might be able to provide alternative activities. However, um, there are some physical demonstrations that the student would need to make. Now, maybe the student would be able to make those physical demonstrations uh, virtually um, or live um, with Mrs. Park um, and some type of family member at home who's willing to participate. So again, uh, I am, I'm doing the best that I can, but I will make sure to forward that question and you can contact Mrs. Park directly, okay? Um, so a lot of thank yous. Boy, I, I sure am glad to see that there's a lot of thank yous uh, and not more questions. Uh, I appreciate that. My blood pressure is going down by the point right now. Thank you. Uh, when does the final decision have to be made to choose the option that our student wants? Uh, by August 10th, 2020. And it's a live online uh, survey. Um, so I, I, I thank you for that question. Um, uh, I see that Mrs. Lessig has responded that she is going to try healthy uh, and avoid trainings and be in school every day. This is great. Um, I thank you for uh, someone had some uh, acknowledgement that this is very uncharted waters. So I really appreciate that. 
folks, I've now gotten to the end of the of the chat. Uh, I can't I can't mention how much I appreciate your patience, Mr. Miller. If you could flip to that last slide, please. Um, I want to thank you for attending this evening. Uh, we really appreciate your active participation in your child's education, and not just here during COVID, but um, traditionally throughout the years here in the Wayne Highland School District. Uh, I'll tell you what, we're not recognized in the Pittsburgh Business Gazette. We're not recognized by US News and World Report. We're not recognized by Scranton Times Tribune just because of the teachers administrators, okay? We have very supportive parents. We have good, hardworking students um, in this district. And uh, I'm grateful and blessed uh, to be an administrator here in this district. So thank you very much for your support. Um, I see three more chats, but none of them are questions. So uh, I'm gonna conclude. Um, again, thank you all very much. Ha uh, have a great evening.